Address the devil's advocate. Um, some would be listening to everything you're saying, and I think they would say, well, you know, you, you said that secularism is totalitarian um, in the sense that it's, it's, it forces, uh, it's coercion. And Islam, certainly, uh, Sharia law is, is uh, coercion. Um, but you and I would, would both prescribe to theonomy, um, and there would be some who don't like our position and that would claim, you know, some who even are Christian would claim that, that what we're advocating for is just another form of coercion. Um, and so, you know, that, that as post-millennial theonomic reformed Christians, um, I think, you know, the, the devil's advocate would say, you know, they would say, how is what you're trying to accomplish any different than ushering in some kind of earthly utopia through force. How would you address that, that counter, that pushback? Yeah, uh, first, the, the Christian way, the biblical way is regeneration, not revolution. And, uh, uh, or the, uh, which is, you know, and I, and I would include Islam in that revolutionary model of, you know, conquest by the sword, uh, uh, by violence. Uh, by force. Um, the reason that um, uh, secularism is totalitarian is its view of the state. The state is the all-encompassing, all-inclusive institution. And uh, it begins to, you can see it, you observe the West today, the state now dominates more and more areas of people's lives, it begins to redefine the family, seeks to control the church, education, economics, uh, media, everything. Totalitarianism, you don't need to be looking for a Hitler or Stalin type figure. That's authoritarianism that is usually um, accompanied by totalitarianism. But totalitarianism is when one created sphere or well-made institution by the Lord seeks to swallow and treat the other spheres of life in parts the whole relationship. In Islam, the, the, uh, the, mm. the, the state is everything. Uh, the, and so there is a there is a reach of the power and authority of the state into every area of life. There's no there's no grasp of the principle of sphere sovereignty. Um, the same is true, and of course, the, the, the in you know Islam grew out of an undifferentiated society. In any case, uh, a tribal society, and that's why whenever it dominates, you get this totalizing um, statist view. Um, the um, uh, the secular world, uh, which now rejects uh, post the, the French Revolution, rejects the lordship of Jesus Christ and sees um, society basically rooted in just a social contract. Well, that's Jean-Jacques Rousseau. And um, his view of the state was totalitarian. The, the, the general will is where the, the people surrender, in a sense, their independence, their individuality. And the general will is what the state says on their behalf. Um so the, the the state becomes, you know, that's precisely why you know the goddess of reason was enthroned in Notre Dame, and um, the 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 living God is is uh, is is thrown out. Uh, the uh, human society, human community, is no longer about covenant, and it's certainly no longer a covenant with past, present, and future. It's a revolutionary act to say uh, we starting we're starting over. Um, vox populi, vox dei, the voice of the people is the voice of God that's embodied in the state in the general right. will. And increasingly, that's the position that we're seeing in, in, in Western states. There is no transcendent authority over and above the state that could bring it into um, to judgment, that can uh, hold it accountable, and that can delimit its, its power, uh, which is the foundation of liberty. The foundation of liberty uh, is the delimiting of state power and authority. You see that throughout the pagan empires of the Older Testament period and, of course, in the Greco-Roman world. So biblical law, theonomy, as you talked about there, um, is about the, the rule of God's law, one, one law for all, freedom under the law. And uh, unlike statist law, it's, um, it's restrained and it's very limited. Most areas of life are freedom. Um, there are there are ten commandments, not ten thousand commandments, and right. then there are um, case law right. applications, which um, we need to positivize those for our for, for our own time and our own environment. 
But the concern of biblical law, it's often been described really as biblical libertarianism, freedom under God, where family, church, state, vocations and the various other areas of life are left free, uh, free to serve, serve the Lord. So people do get uh, this rather wrong headed. Um, if I can shamelessly plug my book, Ruler of Kings, toward a Christian view of government, it, I explain how people get confused about this. They think, oh, you know, uh, biblical law, that's like Sharia law for Christians. Um, that's like a totalitarian mm. authoritarianism where clergymen are going to rule the state and enforce biblical law on an unwilling society. That's the absolute opposite of our position. It's regeneration. Uh, it must be something that comes from the bottom up because it, you know, godly and righteous laws are, are demanded by a godly and righteous people um, who want to be in covenant with the Lord. And, uh, and want to live in freedom uh, and uh, no righteousness and justice. The third and final point would be, if it's the law of Christ, if it's the law of the living God, if it's the law that Jesus Christ himself expounded on the mountain, why wouldn't we want that? His law is liberty. That's what the Apostle James tells. His law is love and it's also liberty. It's the law of liberty. And so if we want a liberating mm -hmm. law, it's going to be uh, law of God, freedom under God and his law, um, not the uh, apostate um, totalitarian law of man that reaches into every single department of life uh, to control you and coerce you.